Hello, my friends, and welcome to Kiss Up Silks, Level Four, Class Four. Let's start class with a five-minute warm-up in move time. Run in place, lifting the knees as high as possible each time. Ready? Begin. <laughs> Fantastic! Halfway there. Sit down and place the elbows on the floor. Point the toes and engage the legs to keep them straight as you lift them both up as high as possible and tap the heels to the floor. Begin. Nice work. Halfway there. From standing, alternate lifting each leg as high as possible and tapping the heel to the ground. Ready? Begin! <laughs> Lay on your belly and bring the arms up in front of you. Lift all four limbs up toward the ceiling and hold. Ready? Begin! <laughs> Almost there. Lay down and place the feet flat on the floor. Rest the fingers behind the ears but do not pull on the neck. Curl the chest in just until the shoulders lift off the floor, then lay back down. Begin! <laughs> Halfway there. You've got this. Extend one leg back behind you as you fold over the front leg. Then bring the back leg up and tuck the knee into the chest as you hop. Then extend it back out behind you. Begin. <laughs> Fantastic! Halfway. Shift the hips back and squat down to the floor to lay down and bring the arms up overhead. Without using the hands to assist you, bend the knees in, bring the feet flat to the floor to squat and stand again. Halfway. Thank <laughs> you. 
From crab position, lift the hips to the ceiling and bend and extend the elbows. For an additional challenge, lift one leg off the floor. Begin! <laughs> Halfway there. Great job. Now that we're warmed up, let's do a five minute stretch. Today we're going to start with our legs shoulder width apart. We're going to roll our neck one direction. And the other. Back to the center, we're going to bring one ear to one shoulder. We're going to bring our hand up and gently press down as we bring the other hand out with the palm up, reaching toward the floor. We're going to look down slightly. Release, other side. Down slightly. Release, intertwine our fingers behind the head. Gentle, gentle stretch here. and release. We're going to toe heel our legs further than shoulder width apart and we're going to squat bringing our bottom way far back so we have a flat back and as we come up we're going to squeeze our shoulder blades together. Two more times. Really feel that hip open, keep your knees out, don't let them fall in and up. Last time. We're gonna do lateral lunges. So we're gonna bring one leg up and out. And up and out. And up and out. Last one. Other side, up and out. Up and out. Up. Last one, up and out. From here, we're gonna go on all fours. We're gonna do fire hydrants. So from the tabletop position, I'm gonna hover my knee. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pour all my weight into the other side. I'm gonna try to stay as balanced as possible. And I'm gonna bring that knee to the outside of my elbow, rotate out, keeping it high, rotate back and back in. Two more times. As I'm doing this, I'm keeping my core engaged. Other side. From here, we're gonna do a lunge. So I'm gonna go to the side so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna bring one leg forward, curl my back toes underneath. I'm gonna keep my opposite hand down on the floor and I'm gonna twist. I'm gonna drop my back knee, shift back for a half split. You should feel this in the belly of the muscle. If you feel it at the joint, bend the knee slightly so that you can feel it here. Rock forward and grab your back leg and pull it in for a quad stretch. If you're having trouble balancing, keep a hand there. Otherwise, up. Release and switch. 
Same side hand up. Back down. Shift back. I'm keeping my back flat here. Shift forward, grab the back knee. And release. We're gonna shift into butterfly position. Feet together. Outside edge of the feet together. You're gonna open your feet up like a book. You're gonna keep your back really, really flat and use your elbows to press your knees into the floor. Lift the chest and reach forward. Your knees are actively reaching toward the floor as well. Release, bring your legs wide. Reaching the pinky toes out with an external rotation of the leg. Point the toes and we're gonna make wide sweeping circles from foot to foot. Trying to get our tor torso as low as we can. And then hold in the center for a pancake stretch. Really pressing the knees into the floor. And release. Bring the feet together and squat. Forward fold. And roll up. And we're ready for class. It's strength time. Follow these moves and be sure to challenge yourself. We will give you a chance to pause the video and choose your number of repetitions so you can go at your own pace. Starting with the stronger leg, hold the silk with the same side hand high and wrap the leg from the outside in, keeping the knee high and the foot flexed. Lift the free foot while pulling up and squeeze the silk between your feet with the ball of your top foot. Push into the silk as you straighten your legs, holding your body weight up with your hands. Reach your hands high again to grip, pull up, unwrap the wrapped foot and wrap the opposite foot. Squeeze the silk between the feet and repeat. Now it's your turn. From the ground, reach up high and double crochet from the outside in. Slowly bend your knees to shift the weight into your hands, allowing your body to sink and your ears to touch your shoulders. Make sure the shoulders remain engaged by always turning the thumbs toward one another. Lift your heels toward your back. Slowly pull your shoulders away from your ears and back again. For heart shrugs, lift the chest toward the ceiling, making sure the knees remain pointing toward the floor and we're not bending at the waist. Now it's your turn. Split the fabric and hold it out to the side like you're aiming a bow and arrow. Pull up and lean back as you bring your legs between the fabric and continue pulling until the knot is at the hips. Keep the legs lifted in the back. To come out, use the silk to lift the chest up Release one hand, reach across your chest to grab the other side of the silk, twist to look up at the ceiling and slide forward. Now it's your turn. From standing, split the fabric and place one ankle on the knot. Turn to face the ground in a lunge position with knee directly over ankle, pushing down into the fabric and shifting the hips back slightly to maintain a straight back, bend the front leg and straighten it again. Now it's your turn. From a seated position, split the fabric and place the ankles on the knot. Turn to face the ground and hold yourself up in a push-up position with wrists directly under shoulders. Pushing down into the knot, lift the hips while keeping the legs straight until the hips line up directly over the shoulders. Slowly bring the legs back out to the starting plank position and repeat. 
Now it's your turn. It's fly time, where we will focus on aerial tricks. From the air, reach high and split the fabric. Release the feet and allow the silks to drop between the legs. Wrap both legs at the same time once from the outside in, then straddle high and wrap quickly a second time. Flex the feet and squeeze the legs together. Pull up as you bend the knees, keeping the instep of the feet touching until the knees are at hip height. Then step both feet onto the slack from the inside out. To unwrap, pull up and point the toes and lift the feet off the fabric as you step forward. Now it's your turn. From egg beater footlocks, enter into a straddle back. Bend the knees slowly, keeping the silk on the inside of the legs. Bring the feet behind the tight ends and tilt the pelvis forward as you hollow the torso to sit up. Hold the silk as you point the toes and slide the footlocks off the heels and unwind the legs. Now it's your turn. From the air, split the fabric at chest height and release the feet to invert into a straddle, crochet the legs, and sickle against the fabric. For extra support, cross the legs and squeeze the thighs. Slide the hands down the fabric and bring it behind the back to cross the silks twice. Slide the hands against the fabric back to the front, holding tight at the hips. Uncrochet the legs and straddle out, tilting the pelvis forward until the legs fall beneath you. Without releasing the fabric you're already holding, grab the tight end at shoulder height and invert into a bird's nest, piking slightly as you come out to slide the silk to the bottom so you can sit like a swing. Carefully release the tight ends while continuing to pull the loose ends up to support your weight. 
cross them across the lap one time, holding tightly at the hips, switch the grip so thumbs face you, using the abs to reverse crunch to slow the descent, allow the bottom to drop off the silk as you squeeze the silk tightly at the knees and arch the back. To come out, continue holding the loose ends of the silk for safety, sit up and grab the tight ends of the fabric one at a time, reach high, straighten the legs out in front of you and push down on the fabric as you pull up and the silks will unravel. Now it's your turn. Great job, everyone. It's time to come together and close the class with circle time. Thank you for joining us in today's class. For circle time, I'd like you to sit down with legs crossed, shoulders relaxed, and feel free to close your eyes as you listen along. Today's life skill is focus, and I have a quote from Zig Ziglar that I'd like to share. Lack of direction, not lack of time, is the problem. We all have 24-hour days. It's easy to become overwhelmed when we think of all that we need to do to accomplish our goals, especially with social media and our constant exposure to comparison. When we think about where we are now and where we want to be, we can become lost in how much there is to do. Focusing on one thing at a time can help us attain our goals faster than trying all of them at once. In our aerial practice, we may find ourselves with multiple challenges at once. Maybe we can't invert with straight legs and we're having a hard time pulling up without a jump. It might feel like we don't have enough time during our training to work on both, and it can make us feel defeated, thinking we'll never accomplish either. But if we separate them and work on them one at a time, we may find that not only are we able to overcome the challenge, but we won't feel as overwhelmed as we work toward it. Let's close today's class with three deep cleansing dragon breaths. On the inhale, let's think of all the ways we succeeded today. And on the exhale, let's let go of all of our frustrations so we can be ready to do it again next time. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Again. Last one. Thank yourselves for coming to class.